Okay, welcome everyone to the MP2000 IEC Web Tension Control Applications webinar. My name is Sixto Morales, and I am a regional motion engineer for Yaskawa America. The topics for this webinar include the following. An introduction to web handling, why is tension important in applications? <clears throat> we'll give an overview of the web tension concept, including tension control and discussion on rollers. We will also discuss the main components in web tensioning, specifically the webmaster, the dancer control, the transducer control, and the draw control. Three key function blocks of solving web tensioning applications, which include the wide direct control function block, the moving average, and the PID control. We'll also look at an example uh, and some results, an application example and some results, and we will do an example using the logic analyzer for troubleshooting, and then a quick rundown of the future winding toolbox, and finally, we'll do a demonstration uh, using these function blocks in a sample web tension application using MotionWorks IEC. So, what is web tension handling? The easiest definition is processing a web through a machine to satisfy the needs of another process, increasing productivity and efficiency. Tension can be defined as any force tending to elongate a web. For example, in coding or printing machines, depending on the thickness of applied material specified by the customer, we move the web at a certain speed to apply this material. As in every system, uh, there are limitations. In the example of printing machines, the limitations of, of printing, even though the web can go faster, if the quality becomes bad, it becomes a bad product and out of scope. A web can be any long, thin, and flexible material, and is usually made out of paper, foil, non-woven, film, textiles, or some combinations of these. <clears throat> some application examples include paper mills, film elongation, a coder, a laminator, printing, or splitting. As stated previously, tension is defined as a force tending to elongate a web. Uh, force divided by the width of the web equals tension. So the units for this measurement is given in TLI, pounds per linear inch. Tension has several effects on webs, including flatness, which creates a, a bagginess or a curl, uh, the geometry, the length, width, and thickness of the material itself, the positioning and registration, uh, web breaks, winding quality, and wrinkles. So why tension a web? Four main reasons include controlling the speed of the web during acceleration, steady state, and deceleration. Two, controlling the web stretch to pull out any bagginess without damaging the web. The third reason is to stiffen the web to reduce any sagging or any wrinkles. And four, to create traction on the rollers, and in winding rollers to control slip, scratching, and tracking. <clears throat> Tension control elements include tension sensors such as load cells or transducers, a dancer, a tension actuator, and a tension controller, be it a PLC, a motion controller, or drive. It's impossible to control a web without proper tension being applied to it. The web has to be in traction with all machine idler rollers and driven rollers to ensure proper web tension or web handling and control. In the simplest form, Tension has to be maintained. With just two motors turning, if there's too much tension, the material will break. In winding and unwinding applications, it is desired to control both speed and tension of the material being wound. While this cannot be done with a single motor, two motors provide the capability to control both variables simultaneously. Typically, the unwind motor turns at a speed to maintain the desired tension and the winding motor turns at a speed to maintain the linear speed of the material. Three types of operations exist. <clears throat> a constant speed operation, where the speed varies depending on the roll diameters, the material thickness, the encoder position difference, and by diameter calculation. A constant tension operation, where the tension is, ma is managed while maintaining a constant speed. And in position operations, where the tension is managed 
while a nip roll is driving the line with position mode, forward or reverse. Understand this is, this is not a, a positioning mode per se, but rather using a steady, a steady tension while the web is indexing. So what are we trying to accomplish? This layout, is, this layout is a general concept of the control algorithm. As stated in the beginning, we want to process a web through a machine to satisfy the needs of another process. This diagram explains the web control for wind and unwind rollers using a dance, dancer roll, the light green here, and a tension transducer, this olive color here, for feedback on a nip roll driven system. Using this winding setup, the nip roll divides the web into two separate tension fields. The right section of the right section of this diagram shows is with a tension transducer, and the left section with a dancer roll. The tension set points and the web line speed can be set by the controller or the HMI. The system commands three servo motors, as stated previously. We have a nip roll and two winders. So for feedback, it uses a tension transducer for the right side and a dancer roll for the left. And for the webmaster encoder, it uses the feedback of the nip roll. So the basic command used to maintain the tension on the right side and uh, well, the basic command used to maintain the tension on the right side and the dancer position on the left side is speed. Starting with the nip speed in either modes, jogger index, the three servos receive the appropriate commanded speed and the same time. The master is directly commanded with a minimal adjustment to the resulted speed command. This, the same command is used with the sensor feedback adjustment through a proportional and integral filter and a diameter compensation to control the winders. The diameter compensation is either added or subtracted from the winder speed command based on the direction of the web. A little note here on rollers. Rollers play an essential part of the web. There are two types of rollers. There's transport rollers, which carry the web elastically, be it an idler, a pull, or a lay-on roller. And then there's process rollers, which change the web permanently, be it a coating, lamination, or printing. Rollers change web tension, and the effects of this is that the idler rollers can add inertia, consequently raising tension except during deceleration. And driven rollers raise tension when braking uh, and lower tension when, when motoring. As a reminder, uh, the goal of web tensioning is the torque. The most important thing is that we maintain this tension on the material throughout the speed change. Tension is always the primary goal. The webmaster is thought of as the basic control for the system. Tension is always, or I'm sorry, this is where we define the production rate of the machine so that the other roles in the system can tension based on that speed with feedback or a draw rate. So this can be accomplished by using either an external encoder or a nip roll with a servo attached. As an illustration of the two winders, one winder keeps tension by adjusting the speed so that the other winder can pull or advance. When the motor pulls on the material, there's more tension or torque while it accelerates. Therefore, there's more pulling at speed up than at speed. Later in the presentation, we'll see how we incorporate the moving average function block to act as a ramp. <clears throat> so now we move into the dancer control. To explain the graph, the red line is the material uh, moving from right to left. The webmaster, in this case, moves, as, as an example, moves at a velocity of 100 inches per second based on the encoder and is processed through a dancer arm where pressure of the dancer arm is controlled by a voltage to pressure transducer, which is this EP, and fed to the in-feed nipped roll. Using the encoder as reference, we convert the resolution into linear units, inches per second, and then feed it to the speed, at, to the speed reference. The tension set point value is user configurable by an HMI or a controller converted into an analog volt value and then sent to the voltage to pressure transducer 
thus creating the air pressure needed to, at the dancer. The target position, also set by the HMI, is configured to maintain a position on the dancer, not a web position. We then, feed the read the, we then read the feedback sensor, the analog input, from the dancer arm to calculate a dancer position error as a percentage. This gets fed into a PI filter and converted into a speed correction value that commands the speed reference to the servo motor. The dancer roll uses a position sensor for feedback. The goal for this slide is, is not the tension, it's, but specifically what the sensors do to the overall system. <clears throat> On a linear dancer arm, from, let's say, negative 10 volts to plus 10 volts, the midpoint for the dancer to settle at is at zero volts. So this linearity provides the upper and lower limits of the dancer, and the target position should be the midpoint of travel range. This is adjusted every update scan rate. In the case of the rotary dancer arm, the bottom right side drawing shows a maximum rotation of 60 degrees. This is the limitation of the actuator itself and the rotation. The end of an actuator would be connected to one of the rollers to provide the 60 degrees of rotation. As the actuator moves in and out, <coughs> the rotation is limited. However, a delta is still available to find the midpoint of the dancer. So while maintaining the same air pressure to the dancer arm, if too much tension is present, this means the motor must start to slow down to allow the tension to loosen a bit. Vice versa, too little tension means the motor must speed up to allow the tension to tighten up. Many customers like the dancer to go down when stopping the machine. Therefore, this can be done by setting the set position reference to zero. Because of dancer inertia and friction, a tension spike may be generated as dance direction shifts, uh, a stall condition, which means zero speed with tension applied, the dancer goes to a preset point, usually less tension than running condition. There's some dancer concerns and limitations are that there's no display of tension, the existence of mechanical friction and static friction is usually large, and there's momentum backlash from high rates of acceleration and deceleration. <clears throat> Moving on to the transducer control, going through the diagram, the web material travels from right to left, so through a transducer, and to the outfeed nipped roll. With the encoder speed as the webmaster, a tension set point is entered through the HMI to set the, to set the transducer. The feedback signal, the analog input, is scaled to become a tension error and converted into a percentage. Once fed through the PI loop, percentage error is converted to a correction commanded speed. Uh, as with the dancer, we scale the analog input of the load cell to issue a correct value. For example, if the tension set point is at 35 pounds and the feedback shows 32, we know that there's a difference of three pounds. So after some calculations and a percentage error fed to the system, the axis in this case, would speed up to achieve the 35 pounds of tension. This creates another PI loop to maintain tension. The transducer requires a, a very accurate and, and fast compensation. A slight deflection causes a large tension difference. Uh, it comes with either current or voltage feedback. The control principle here is if, too, if tension is too high, meaning the tension feedback is higher than the set point, the motor is rotating too fast and will begin to slow down until the actual tension is at the tension set point. Whereas a higher or low web tension can be visually recognized when seeing a web sag or necking, determining the web tension can be done by measuring either brake, current or pressure or motor amperage. Uh, for precision applications, the most typical measurement and feedback devices are load cells and dancers. A load cell, um, also called transducer, a transducer, is a roller mounted on an electronic force gauge that feeds back to a motor torque speed controller. It is used for monitoring tension and tension control for precision design. Some load cell limitations and concerns are that the cells need to be mechanically protected from overload. Uh, they're perceptive to electrical and mechanical noise. Uh, at high speed, cells have the tendency to resonate, and the control requires precise mechanical and electrical design. Um, system vibration and air entrainment conditions can cause inaccurate tension reading. <coughs> Moving on to draw control. So what is draw control? An easy way to remember draw control is anytime you drive the web material with two or more rollers, there's draw. 
Sometimes no feedback is given to monitor or control tension between the two rollers. In the illustration above, if we command a velocity to the master of 100 feet per minute, we find the velocity of the draw roll will be 99 feet per minute. So that's a ratio of negative 1% is calculated and fed to the system to correct the speed. Why do we need draw control? To create tension by continually feeding a different speed based on the master. For some applications, we intentionally set this draw rate much higher to create tension, but not to fight against the web speed. So how do we do it? We use proportional control and apply the draw control to this axis instead of integral control to create tension. In some cases, coating rollers uh, may be slippery due to the material of the roller. This is one example uh, where, one example is liquid coating, since the liquid is on the surface of the roller. So this means the roller can't be used for tension control. Instead, we, we can make it a draw roll to support and reduce the amount of pull on the master. By making adjustments to the draw rate, the overall traction is increased by having more draw roll. So this block diagram shows the the web material moving from right to left, and as the encoder speed is fed in, into the system, the draw ratio is also calculated to adjust the speed of the motor, creating tension. There are various uh, webbing applications that have multiple rollers in contact with, with each other. At times, these rollers have to come in contact with the web on the fly due to the thickness of the material. And we incorporate draw control to adjust the surface speed of the roll to the web. In the example above, the two rollers at right adjust based on a cam position <clears throat> by the servo motor. This cam is preset by the user according to the thickness of the material. Draw control's main purpose is not to fight against other rollers or axes. In webbing applications, other rollers may apply a coating material and if there is integral gain, they will fight each other. With only proportional gain, there is room for them to stay together. So, transitioning now from uh, kind of an overview of, uh, of web tensioning concepts, we move into three key function blocks to solving these web tensioning applications. Now that we've covered the main components in web tensioning, so now let's take a look at these three key function blocks the moving average function block is used for a couple of reasons. One is a change in speed, and another is a change to a target position, or a reference command. This function block provides the moving average of a, ser of a series of, of samples. The new value can either be streamed continuously or updated only when the trigger value goes high. So, for example, in a change of speed, when a new value is entered, we can actually we can ramp into this change depending on the number of samples and the update rate. When a system first starts up, the speed can be set by the controller or the HMI. In the example stated earlier of 100 inches per second, starting from zero and going to 100 inches per second with the web in the machine, you wouldn't want to get to speed as fast as you can, as this could break the material before getting to speed. So. In the example shown, with with the mechatrolling scan rate of 4 milliseconds and a sample size of 500, we establish a two-second ramp in. In a change of speed, in a change of reference command, we do just the same. For instance, we could reference the dancer roll target position or the dancer roll feedback to a voltage-to-pressure transducer. At the start of the machine, the voltage-to-pressure transducer is not controlled and would be starting at zero meaning that there's no pressure to the dancer, and the user enters a target position of 100 PSI. If the command is not ramped in, the pressure from the transducer would command the dancer to engage quickly, whereby possibly breaking the web. Instead, we soften the step input change based on a new value over a series of samples, or time. The PID control function block, so based on the setup of machines, we use the PID control function block to adjust gains. For instance, <clears throat> a system can have two modes, a setup mode where tension is built is built up for, for running a machine, 
uh, and a production mode where the tension is maintained while running the machine. When tuning a system, this function is, uh, is pretty handy as it can be added to the watch window and um, monitored for you know, the gains that you can, that you can uh, change. By using this function block, we can load in different sets of gains depending on the system. The Y direct control function block allows direct access to any of three possible control modes available on the Megatrolink network. It makes it possible to perform an open loop velocity control. Speed loop is still closed in the Sigma amplifier, but no position loop for winding or for web tensioning or winding applications. With position mode, the application program can apply an algorithm to directly command the servo's position at, at every scan or speed. As long as the enable input is high, the function block continues to activate and continually feeds the corrected uh, velocity. With control mode uh, set to number two, we are in velocity mode through the controller. So this is like using an, an analog potentiometer on a servo, giving a speed reference based on an error, an error percentage. But remember, the difference between using the wide direct control function block and the MC move velocity <clears throat> as stated here, the difference between using the Y direct control and the MC move velocity is that the Y direct control function block is just a speed reference. It doesn't catch up to any position or look at any feedback. Whereas the MC move velocity uses the PID loop to compensate for any error. So although a continuous velocity move is being executed, the axis will be in position mode. So as an application example, let's say we have a coding machine that has to apply coding to mm -hmm. printed paper and maintain tension on the web. Uh, we have seven axes of motion. The web tension input is um, an analog signal, zero to 10 volts, and has to be scaled linearly from, 100 to 150, so from the zero to 150 pounds of full tension. We have range of set points from the machine from 0.8 to 2 PLI and there's web widths of 25 to 30 inches. Material, of course, is paper, and the thickness, the maximum paper thickness that we have is an eighth of an inch. So the result of what we, what we are able to accomplish is the speeds get up to 600 feet per minute. <clears throat> web acceleration and deceleration, there's the, the normal stop and start, which is a, an XL of 67 feet per minute per second, or zero to 400 feet per minute in six seconds as well as a fast stop or emergency stop of 200 feet per minute per second, basically getting zero to 400 feet per minute in two seconds. We're able to control the tension from zero to 150 pounds. The dancer was able to achieve position stability within 10% uh, acceleration and deceleration. Our tension control was at around 2% stability. And by adjusting the draw rate to the applicator roll, we commanded a draw factor of 1.048. So troubleshooting now. In cases where the machine uh, should be acting a certain way, uh, this, this debugging tool is perfect for illustrating you know, what is happening in the real world versus what should be happening. So the example that we have here is uh, following an encoder speed, actually should ramp down to a stop. Uh, time to stop is five seconds. We got some charts that follow here. So in this example, we have uh, our web machine is following an encoder speed at a given velocity. When an emergency stop is issued, there's a five second time delay before the run signal is taken away. And this allows the machine to quickly ramp down to zero speed before disengaging the run signal. If the run signal is taken away while the machine is at commanded speed, the web material breaks and oscillation may occur. So looking at these three charts here, the tension in feed actual velocity, the external encoder speed, and the press follow indicator, we find that at <clears throat> At about sample 359, the, encoder, the external encoder speed is still descending from 12 inches per second when the press follow indicator signal is taken away. So with this signal low, we no longer have the ability to follow the external encoder speed, and we rapidly descend to zero. And since the signal was taken away, uh, oscillation did occur, as seen in the tension in feed actual velocity here and here. 
So using the logic analyzer, we were able to visually see and prove what was, what was going on. Once we figured out what the issue was, adjustments were made on the customer side, and we ran the test again at 15 inches per second. So once successful at that speed, we bumped up to 80 inches per second. And as you can see, looking at these charts, we can see that press follow indicator remains high, so we have enough time to ramp down to zero before uh, or following the external encoder speed. So this shows the benefits of using the logic analyzer to find missing links in perfecting uh, a machine. Moving on now to uh, the, the future winding toolbox. Um, there's a winding toolbox in the works for, for winding and web tensioning applications. More on this to follow in the coming months as Iscao incorporates more function blocks to assist in programming. But the functionality of this toolbox will allow web handling, spooling, and converting applications to uh, make use of the pre-built TLC open function functions uh, for, the P, for the MT2000 IEC series controllers to help speed up uh, program development. <coughs> to name a few, we do have a function block that has a winding diameter, a linear to rotary, a diameter math as well, and the constant speed calculation. So now uh, I'd like to just take a few moments to demonstrate uh, a web tensioning application. Our example here, we see that as, as our setup, well, so basically what we can show is that we can command um, or at power, at power up, at setup of the machine rather, there are two sets of parameters that we want to load in, at setup tension and maintain tension. So we call them either stall mode or production mode. The PID parameters are loaded in as a structure here. So if there's a stall, if stall mode, we can infeed these sets of, of gains into our uh, controller for our three axes of motion. So I guess back up here for a second. We have three axes of motion. We have an infeed roller, an applicator roller, and an outfeed roller. Uh, and we're looking at using different gains for different types of modes. So for stall mode, we have these. And for production mode, we have <clears throat> these gains here. Depending on what's selected at startup, we can enter different sets of values. Following an external encoder speed, we find that in the main in feed here, our attention, our dancer set point position is at five. So we're basically calculating a dancer target position ramp up. We use the moving average. We use a moving average to adjust this target speed. If I were to take this control off, we would see that the dancer position would come into moving average at 50, and the moving average would actually start to uh, ramp, as seen here. So basically, we've, uh, we're controlling the amount of, of pressure to the dancer arm um, so that the material does not break. So if we turn this back on here, we see that we want to get back down to the dancer target position of five, and we'll go through what we do here. In this section, we calculate the dancer position error. So taking the dancer position from an analog input, uh, we scale it out to find the dancer target position of, that wants to maintain at five. We either maintain the dancer position error of zero. If this were to go to four, we would see a, a one here. Converting the dancer position error into a percent, so we want to scale it from our 0 to 10 volts, at 0 being 0 percent and 10 being 100 percent, we come out with a dancer position error percentage. This percentage gets fed into our PID control function block. Now with the infeed PID parameters from our parameter list here, And our reference of zero, meaning that we want zero error, we can find what sort of position error percentage um, we have to correct for. <clears throat> Converting the speed correction percent into an in-feed speed correction, we get uh, the, the max line speed of the encoder that the machine will follow, in this case, 120 inches per second. And we use the in-feed correction percentage multiplied together. We get the in-feed NIP speed correction. Following the, encoder, following the encoder speed, we can put it into, uh, 
or we can subtract it from the infeed nip speed correction to create an infeed nip commanded feed, which then goes to our wide direct control function block. So this function block will all continuously feed a velocity uh, to the axes to maintain a, a speed. In our main applicator uh, code here, we do just about this, we do the same thing. Only this one is going to be using a load cell. So we calculate a tension set point uh, to ramp in or to ramp up. So we're using the HMI tension set point here at 75. <coughs> and that's loaded in from our load cell, our analog input. And we come out with a, an applicator tension error. Uh, we convert that, of course, into a percentage. 0 to 150, so 0 to 150 pounds of, of tension. We scale that as an, an error percentage here. Apply that into another PID control with the applicator PID parameters here. Use that percentage along with the max line speed of the applicator. And then we calculate a commanded speed for the applicator axis which then gets fed into the wide direct control function block. So we continually feed a speed to the, the applicator axes, um, and based on our parameters for the gains, we can adjust those gains to uh, either ramp in quickly or, or just maintain that velocity. We've also incorporated a draw factor for, the, for different rollers where we would look at the commanded speed from the previous axes, which is a command, the applicator commanded speed, and shoot it out to or compare it to the uh, to the analog's rollers. In this case, where we have four rollers, two of them touching two of them touching each other, based on the cam, uh, we would then feed that draw ratio into our outfeed or our analog um, rollers. This was a quick demonstration using the two-axis demo. By the way, this was using the MP2300 uh, series uh, demonstration with the, the two-axis demo. Um, I guess <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation, and uh, we'll be, I guess, looking at questions now. So I thank you for your time, as well as I'd like to thank the gentleman who helped me put this presentation together back at headquarters and, um, and nationwide. Thanks a lot, Sixto. Great job. Thank you. This is Kevin Hall at the Yaskawa headquarters, uh, along with Nishant Unikrishnan and Kengo Agami. Um, so far, I don't see any questions on the uh, chat board about the discussion. But uh, Sixto, maybe in the meantime, you could explain a little bit more about your application program and uh, just give us a quick overview on some of the uh, update rates that you used uh, for calculating the, the PID values that we're using with the wide rec control block? Well, for our application that we use, the seven axes worth, this is only using two. So our seven axes that we had in our application, we were using a mechatrilling scan rate of four milliseconds. And using the, uh, the sample size uh, from the moving average of 500, we were able to establish a, a ramp in of uh, two seconds uh, from a change of a new value uh, into the moving average out uh, to making a, a basically a moving average, which then after being fed through uh, in calculations, we're able to establish a, a you know a two second ramp in speed from the from the velocity into the y direct control. Okay, and then what are the uh what are the task rates here as defined in the uh, resource? Oh, task rates that we have here. Uh, for application, we use, let me get out of debug mode. So for our fast task, we were using, um, actually for our fast task, we were using priority zero. And uh, our intervals were at eight milliseconds. And these, uh, this was the monitoring the raw encoder data, which was being fed straight into the system, uh, no filtering or anything. We just uh, used the <clears throat> the resolution, which I believe was 1,024 
um, counts per inch, and we basically use or you um, through the hardware configurator we scaled that and just use the basic uh, encoder speed that was coming through the um, read the MC read uh, velocity. Uh, the main the main in feed the main applicator roller and the out feed roller we also used at the we kept in the fast task which is at a priority zero and at eight milliseconds our medium task which was just error handling or I/O and uh, things that didn't really need much uh, or just coming from the HMI were set up at uh, priority three. And the interval there, I believe, was at 200 or 20 milliseconds. And then in our slow task, which we inevitably started to just put the like the setup, the setup mode or initialization, where things that didn't really need to be calculated uh, every scan rate, uh, just whenever we it had the chance to, we put that at priority seven, and the interval was at 100 milliseconds. So, um, you know, the PID parameters, which would be loaded once if if it was changed from stall mode to production mode, uh, the setup, uh, you know, things that you just kind of, you know, access control, that sort of thing, uh, we put in the slow task. Okay, thanks again, Mm-hmm. So. Mm -hmm. so if anybody has any other questions, uh, please feel free to uh, email to us or, or um, call us, contact us at 1-800-scout.com. Many of you have our direct phone numbers as well. And uh, that concludes today's webinar. Cool. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Thanks. Have a good day.